The Indian Navy has finally revealed the exact length and width of the two large elevators of INS Vikrant that will carry aircraft from the upper deck to the lower deck for storage maintenance and repairs. INS Vikrant has two lifts that are 14 meters long and 10 meters wide which can accommodate the MiG-29K and Naval Tejas aircraft and it will be a close call for the FA-18 as it is 9.93 meters wide with folded wings. But it is near impossible to operate the Rafale Marine, that has a wingspan of 10.90 meters. The twin-engine deck-based fighter will be 7.6 meters in folded wings configuration, and can be easily accommodated on the lift. Rather than going for advanced variants of ejection seat offered for 120 AMCA fighter jets, the Aeronautical Development Agency has decided to stick with the MK-16 IN-16GS ejection seat manufactured by British firm Martin Baker, that will help to maintain commonality with the 83 Tejas Mark one a aircraft, an upcoming 108 Tejas Mark II 45 Ted BF and 106 HTT-40. The Indian Army is finalizing the requirements of the new generation futuristic tank, that will be procured under the FRCV project in a phased manner, and official sources have said, that the domestic industry is now ready to take the project forward quickly, and if all goes well, the first prototype should be ready by 2030. Officials also said, that the acceptance of necessity for 480 units of future infantry fighting vehicles will be placed before the Defence Acquisition Council in its next meeting. The Indian Army's mechanized infantry that operates the BMP-2 infantry fighting vehicles, are in the process of being upgraded with night fighting capability, and the second generation Conker's ATGMs are being replaced with the NAG third generation ATGM. The Army is also looking at new airburst ammunition that can be fired from the 30mm cannon of BMP-2 to target drones. Amid media reports that India is in advanced stage of discussions to lease 60 U-160 bombers from Russia, experts have said that Russia is likely to follow its old playbook and offer the older Tu-160 airframe to India after modernization that have limited airframe life left in them. The US Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall had said last week that US would consider providing Australia with its upcoming B-21 radar. India should look towards stealth bombers, as the B-21 Raider low observable bomber will be capable of penetrating the toughest defences to deliver precision strikes. The Indian Army conducted a exercise red hunt in Ladakh, that features all the newly inducted weapons and equipment, like Tata Infantry protected mobility vehicles with 7.62mm remote controlled weapon station, Tata Quick Reaction Fighting Vehicles, the Spike LR2 5th Generation ATGM from Polaris MRZR4 Next Generation Light Tactical Mobility Vehicles, while the soldiers were equipped with SIG 716 rifles Negev Light Machine Gun and Anti-Drone System in the exercise. After wide-ranging talks between the two defense ministers, India and Tanzania have decided to create a task force to prepare a five-year roadmap to boost bilateral defense cooperation. A high-level delegation led by Tanzanian Defense Minister also visited the facility of Bharat Dynamics Limited in Hyderabad, and they were briefed on the Akash Air Defense System, and this visit might bring various export orders for the company. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today approved the third positive indigenization list, that includes 780 strategically important line replaceable unit subsystems and components, that will only be procured from Indian industry after the timelines indicated in the list. To enhance inter-service synergy between Marcos commandos of the Indian Navy, and the Rudras of the Thar Raptors Brigade, the formation conducted Rudra Praha joint exercise to improve interoperability. 
Special Forces of the Indian Army and U.S. Army participated in a 48-hour-long validation exercise to validate battle drills to include reconnaissance surveillance, target designation and direct action during the Vajra Praha joint exercise. Oh, my God.